What's up, folks, and welcome to an Indie Retro Ramble Fusion. I have been really excited to talk to you guys about this one ever since it was announced, and I'm very thankful I was able to get myself a pre-release copy of it so that I could go through the whole thing before showing it to you guys. So, yeah, as you can see right here, we're talking about Lamasoft, the Jeff Minter story today. And this is the third in the series of interactive documentaries that Digital Eclipse has started to produce after their pivot away from just general sort of retro collections. The first one was Atari 50, which was really, really cool. And then they decided to start up what they called their Gold Master series. And the idea behind that was that they were going to release shorter versions of those interactive documentaries focused on a specific creator and they were going to release them more frequently than they could with bigger packs like that atari one the first one was on jordan mechner and uh principally prince of persia but not entirely that was a really really good start and this one is on well frankly one of the og indie devs and a lot of you watching may not know who jeff minter is but if you don't you should because both his games and his story are fascinating. And they're something that I have been interested in for a very long time. And I was really happy to see him get this treatment because while he's very well known in certain circles, I don't think he gets the sort of more mainstream recognition that he deserves. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that here. So um, this package works like the other interactive documentaries from Digital Eclipse. If you haven't watched my videos on Atari 50 and the Jordan Mechner collection, really highly recommend you go and check those out. And I, in those, I do go into more uh, extensive discussion about the features of the collection itself. So I won't repeat that here, but it's very simple. You have the different documentary um, sort of chapters that you can go through detailing different eras of Jeff Minter's life and game development. Uh, and, or if you want, you can just dive right in to all of the various different games that are in the collection for you to play. And as you can see, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, this this is really, really cool. Cause I was really, uh, I really was hoping they'd be able to get a lot of his stuff in here. So um, yeah. And there's also here, what's called the gameography, which gives you kind of a, a quick hit uh, look at his different games. Um, and without having to go through the entire story, you can focus on a specific title if you want. There are also interestingly two different uh, versions of the menu music. There's kind of a general ambient track, which is actually quite nice. It's kind of, you know, kind of chill, a nice way to view the menu. And there's also what's called the Minter mix, which I assume is a curated playlist of electronic music. Uh, that Jeff Minter shows that's kind of uh, suiting to the vibe of his games, I guess. I hope I don't get copyright claim for any of these. I don't think so, but I, I guess we'll see what happens here. Uh, and yeah, you pick an era and away you go. You get an interactive timeline here that you can go through that has all kinds of pictures and reference material and quotes from Jeff himself and little story beats and uh, so in some places, videos as well um, that really detail the history of this particular creator and sort of what led him to make the iconic games that he has. And he has made a lot of them. And then, of course, when you get to the different games, you have the options to jump in and play any of the ones that you want. Uh, that goes all the way back to his OG stuff on the spectrum, all the way up to the modern titles that he's made. And of course, all of these uh, emulated packages are very well done. They all have instruction manuals uh, or scans of the instruction manuals, or in the case of like this game, because it was all on screen stuff, they just have really good screenshots that show them, uh, show that to you. You have save and load states for everything. You can remap all your controls, different screen modes, filters, borders, and you can even change some of the, uh, some additional settings related to the game. It's, a very very good package is it the most in-depth emulation on the planet no is it very advanced for this kind of a collection and more than sufficient absolutely so um that's very well done as usual i mean digital eclipse developed their own engine to power these collections so they've got that down to a science right they've got that down pretty well and i'll show you just here quickly what one of the videos looks like I'm going to jump around a little bit here because if you're interested in this, you should go get it. My intention here is not to spoil the whole collection and play all the content for you so you don't have to look at it up yourself. If this kind of thing interests you, go get this. Trust me. But as you can see here, there's little videos throughout this. Uh, this is actually produced in collaboration with a documentary called Heart of Neon, 
which is actually a documentary on Jeff Minter uh, himself that is not out yet. It is currently in production. It's actually being Patreon supported for its production, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, I hadn't heard of it before this collection, and I'm actually really looking forward to checking that out. I love well-produced video game documentaries. I own more than a few Blu-rays of them, and uh, I'll definitely be interested in checking this out uh, to see Jeff Minter's stuff uh, fleshed out a bit more. So there's a lot of articles with Jeff Minter himself, uh, as well as various other figures. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't heard of a lot of the people that are featured uh, in here. A lot of them are people from the British game dev scene, uh, not necessarily people I know. Uh, a lot of these collections, they also talk to Gary Witta too. I mean, I know Gary Witta used to do a lot of writing, you know, writing in games publications. I don't really know why anyone goes to him for advice on much these days other than how to write a bad screenplay. But, uh, you know, he's in here nonetheless, and he is engaging to listen to. Um, and there, I don't know a lot of these people, but I also haven't followed the British game journalism scene as much. So uh, if you're from the UK, you may be going, duh, how do you not know these people? But you know, um, so nonetheless, everyone who's interviewed in this is pretty engaging and pretty cool, interesting to listen to. Not, none of it's boring that much is that much is for sure. I will say that the videos in this, I don't know if Digital Eclipse shot them or if the Heart of Neon people shot them. And this will probably look even worse on YouTube than it actually is, but the videos ha don't seem as crisp as the other collections, especially Atari 50. They seem like they were all shot by different people. Some of them are much lower resolution and almost blurry and pixely compared to some of the other ones. There's definitely a lack of consistency uh, to the videos in this. Not that any of them are bad or hard to watch as a result, but when you see the really nice like 4K polished experience of Atari 50, it, it is a little weird. And you can kind of tell that too because the Atari 50 package is a way bigger install than these are. And I think that might be because they had much higher resolution videos involved in them. So, uh, so that's the intro to Jeff Minter there. But if you scroll around, I'm going to see if I can find, uh, another video where they talk to him. Um, yeah, here's one here, the early days of Llama Soft. So you get, um, you get stuff like this and it's all really cool to watch Jeff Minter. So I haven't talked about him particularly yet, uh, very much and why I'm so fascinated by him. And I think that's what will, you know, I'll do a little bit here. So there he is. He he's many things. Um, he's, I call him one of the OG indie devs because he was doing self publishing and his own little mini projects back before that was the, the actual full on game dev industry segment. It is now, uh, he was self publishing and self releasing his own games back in the day when that was kind of hard to do because there was no internet every game that you made it had to be distributed in a physical form in a store and to do that without a publisher was very difficult especially as a largely one-man operation uh and he did work with a publisher more than a few times in his in his career but he has always really much stuck to his guns he never went to work for for a much bigger developer or publisher he's always Always maintained his own uh, development studio, which is Llama Soft, and there's a reason it's called that. Um, he's always maintained he, he, his fiercely independent spirit. His games are unique and different and weird. And you, you've heard me talk before about how I like games that bring the weird, right? <laughs> and this, um, his stuff absolutely does that. They're all very mechanics focused, which is my main trait with games i guess you'd say like here's grid runner which is an og one which is still one of my favorites uh his games are all very mechanics focused there's really not much of a story in any of them to speak of uh and they're just focused on that real visceral gameplay uh element that that's that's what they're about first and foremost is solid mechanical fun that is easy to learn hard to master and very replayable and that's what he's always done now, Jeff Minter has been accused of taking a lot of um, inspiration from other games. A lot of people have said that many of his games are just ripoffs of well-established things. Example, Red Runner, which I'm playing right here, many people say is a ripoff of Centipede. Uh, some of his his most beloved games uh, are just considered Tempest ripoffs and things like that. 
And yes, I, I think his inspirations are quite obvious in many cases, but he has made some uh, original titles of his own that are very unique in their own way. And frankly, his derivative stuff brings enough new ideas to the table that I don't think you really need, I, I, I don't think it's fair to call them a ripoff. Like here's one, Jeff Minter presents a game for the heavy metal feed, Headbangers Haven. Like it's just, it, it, the, some of the stuff in here is crazy. And you're gonna see some of his other titles later that are just absolutely bananas uh, in terms of, um, of where they go uh, and, and in terms of their mechanical ideas. Uh, and everything he's made is distinctly him. Like, you know that it's, when you see it, you know it's a Jeff Minter game. Uh, and you know that when you play something from him, it's going to be unique. It's going to be, it's it's going to play like nothing else plays. And that's what's really going to, and that's what really stands out about what he what he makes. Uh, you know, he uses, he, he, in addition to games, he also actually made uh, music uh, visualizers before that was um, kind of a big deal. And that's something he talks about in here a lot too. And that involves a lot of really trippy visuals and, uh, you know, synesthesia types of vibes and things like that. Um, here's a game about stealing somebody's mower. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, and yeah he 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 has a very distinct visual style particularly in his later games it's very trippy uh very fancy um very you know lots of flashing colors and really disco like visualizations uh stuff that this game has a very large uh visual sensitivity warning at the beginning uh with good reason um because it can be it can be quite uh jarring to people who aren't used to that and some people think that's really cool some people think it makes his games hard to play and understand uh what's going on and i i can see both points of view but I, overall i'm i'm a huge fan of what he makes and uh i have been for a very long time dang it dog and guy took his mower back <laughs> you know ridiculous stuff like this um and yeah the, the the theme behind his studio's name and like uh the theme behind his studio's name is the fact that Jeff just always found llamas really cool but it's interesting because Jeff is always like again unlike a lot of other developers who you know may have moved into the city to work for a large company or something like that uh Jeff didn't do that he has always he lives out in the middle of nowhere in Wales and he raises sheep and llamas he in addition to this he actually does raise actual sheep and llamas and apparently a lot of the reason he does that was because uh he just found them kind of good support animals because he just really likes their demeanor and he likes how friendly they are and that they actually do bond almost like you know more traditional domestic pets they bond with humans and you know they're 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 really cool to have around so he has his little farm and he talks about this he has his little farm out in the middle of nowhere in wales where he he raises sheep and llamas and if you follow his twitter uh he constantly posts videos of him going out and looking after the uh looking after his his menagerie and uh you know it's it's just very humble beginnings you know or, or very humble roots I, I guess you'd say he he he's not uh one of these developers who got huge and got all kinds of money and let it, you know, get to his head and, you know, became something else that when he started as. He's very, um, he's always lived a, a much more humble existence as a game developer. Uh, just making, you know, weird games that have niche appeal, that don't sell, that aren't gonna sell a billion copies, uh, that never were. And, but he's cool with that because he's making what he wants to make and he's making it how he wants to make it. And he's not into, you know, adhering to convention and established norms of game development and, you know, trying to, to make the next big broad appeal thing that the industry wants. He's just like, I want to make what I think is cool. I want to make what I'm going to enjoy playing. And that's kind of it. If it works, it works. 
if it doesn't it doesn't and as you'll see in here a lot of his career has had its fair share of stumbles and challenges llama soft has almost gone under multiple times uh but he's always managed to find his way um uh together and has always managed to make enough of a living off of his work that he can keep making more of it and that's really what he's all he's really wanted to do yeah like look at this sheep in space like this game is completely bananas uh some of these games are actually very hard to even understand how to play um you know but that's kind of the point is they're designed to be uh something that has a lot of depth for you to figure out and what's cool about this too is is you can as you'll see by going through some of this stuff you can see that jeff was also very engaged with his fans and his community you know he sent out to people who who ordered copies of his games direct from him they would get newsletters that he would hand write where he would wax philosophical about all kinds of different topics but also go talk about his games development and go into detail about it where he was talking about what he was doing and the challenges that he was having and what he was hoping to get it helping to get out of a title that he was about to put out and he was uh very transparent in a way that even indie game developers often aren't you know the the the, the transparency from a business of any kind whether small or large is largely considered taboo these days and even it probably was back then too because you know you don't give away your secret sauce right but he didn't really care he was just like nah here's what i'm doing and you know i i like this and i hope you will too and i just i always had a lot of respect for that humble nature of uh of jeff about he is an extremely talented programmer who was making games from a really young age and always even decades and decades later has always just said yeah i'm gonna do what i want to do and i hope people like it and i just really have a lot of respect for that kind of that kind of effort and that kind of commitment and his unwillingness to chase the easy dollar which with his talent he could absolutely achieve you know he could easily just achieve uh here we go uh, psychedelia this is one of his light synthesizers um you know he could easily have chased the easy dollar uh and and gone for uh that kind of that kind of thing and been a much bigger success than he is but he didn't want to do that he wanted to to stay true to himself and i can really respect that changing gears a little bit here this is one of his um this is one of his visualizers and what's really cool about this is these were designed to allow you to, to custom design uh your own visualizations as well and play along with them and they actually work this into the emulation uh here so you can actually um make your own visualizations and save them and play them back later if you want uh or you could on the commodore 64 which this came off of and this allows you to do that as well so that's really uh that's really cool that they've worked that in as well and there is an automatic demo mode as well that makes it a little easier to you know to, to get an idea of the kind of thing that you could make in this if you wanted to which uh i think is really cool and i really appreciate and there's also um uh you know there's th there is again full instruction manual in here if you want to go through this this is this is one of those things it's not a game right it's just a visualizer it's just a, a way to make trippy visuals but it is deep man like if you look at at all the various things you can do in here this thing may seem simple on the surface but when you start reading through it you're like holy crap like you can do a you can do a lot with this kind of thing so yeah i see psychedelia there is no frustration there is no killing only pleasure <laughs> you know i just i I, I just really respect that and on top of that i like his games i do not everybody does um but i'm a big fan of the stuff that he has made especially so they they don't so unfortunately in terms of his more recent stuff because a lot of it is still up for sale right now this is where the collection falls down a little bit you have tempest 2000 which many consider to be the only good game that ever came out for the atari jaguar um there's an argument to be made there uh so this is a remake of tempest that he made for atari um that uh was actually on the on the atari jaguar uh fun fact there was no good atari jaguar emulator out there until digital eclipse actually wrote one for atari 50 which they then open sourced um so there actually is a quality 
Atari Jaguar out there now, thanks to them. Atari Jaguar emulator out there now, thanks to them. Um, and they use it to great effect here as well. So yeah, this is this is actually a very good um, uh, version of Tempest, but a lot of his more recent stuff that's really good that came out for more modern platforms like Space Giraffe and TXK and well, Tempest 4000, uh, which is the one that he did for more modern systems and things like that, you're not gonna find those here. And some people are gonna find that disappointing. I can understand that to a certain degree because a lot of people who know Jeff Minter know him from his most recent stuff. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't find out about him until the early to mid 2000s simply because he was most prominent in the British gaming scene of which I was not a part. So I didn't get to experience this stuff until later. And it is a little bit disappointing that um, a lot of his more recent stuff is in here, which truly is incredible. Um, you know, he's put out a lot of stuff. Polybius is another one that he put out recently that I own in multiple places. Um, you can still buy a lot of those games uh, on uh, consoles, and some of his stuff have actually been released in collections on Steam as well, which you can also get that way. Uh, he's also put out several titles for VR because Jeff, as you might imagine, being into the kind of things he's into, is a big VR guy. Um, so... Uh, he's put out stuff there, but a lot of these have gotten flat uh, versions as well that you can play without a VR headset, uh, which is quite nice. And yeah, so I, I do wish we had, if not, I can understand why you, you can't get his more, like you can't play his more recent stuff in the collection, but it would be nice to see it mentioned. You know, I don't know why can't they just mention it and then put links to store pages where you could buy it. Like, hey... We can't put Tempest 4000 in this collection, but click this button and it'll take, you know, if you're on PC like I am, click this button and it'll take you to the Steam page. Or if you're on Xbox, it'll take you to that store page. You know, something like that. I, I kind of don't know why they didn't do that because even if you don't have the purchase links, it seems a little, it, 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 if, you, if you were here when I did Atari 50, my one real criticism of that was that they got the history of the links wrong and they, completely discarded the information about the Lynx's development, like how it was originally not an Atari product. And it was a product that Atari actually bought from another company that was on, that was on the brink. That's part of history. And if these things are really trying to document history, then you've got to put that stuff out there. And they didn't do that here. They don't talk about his recent stuff. And in particular, they don't talk about how, well, Jeff has a tumultuous history with Atari, who is the parent company of Digital Eclipse. Now, this is not the current version of Atari. Atari has had a million different owners over the years, which is the subject of much, you know, uh, much discussion. But the current version of Atari, what I call the Wade Rosen era, is not the one that Jeff had beef with. Uh, but at one point in time, when he put out TXK on the PlayStation Vita, uh, which was a Tempest-like game, uh, Atari sued him, basically saying, hey, that's our game, you stole it. And there was a whole hullabaloo about that, and very few people were on Atari's side. Uh, but they ended up eventually coming to uh, coming to an agreement, and that's how we got Tempest 4000, which is a fantastic game. And I think... Um, I want to say Polybius Jeff put out himself. I don't think that is by uh, published by Atari. But yeah, they've got... Uh, and Atari now owns Digital Eclipse, which is the company who put out this package. And there's no discussion of any of that. There's no discussion of, of that legal beef, and there's no discussion about TXK or the settlement they reached or anything like that. And given that this is not a... Um, Given that this is like not a fight that he has with the current version of Atari and that the people responsible for that are long gone now, I don't know why they can't bring it up. It's relevant. It's historical. It's part of the, you know, the record, if you want. And yeah, this is Lamatron, which, okay, this is obviously very clearly uh, Robotron with llamas, but it's dang good. <laughs> it's dang good. And it has its own spin on things, right? Which which I appreciate. But yeah, I don't know why they can't discuss this stuff. I can't see a legal reason why they couldn't. 
Um, given that, again, the people who were responsible for that ridiculous legal battle ultimately are not, not around anymore. And it, it's just, it's glossing over and it feels almost like whitewashing a critical part of this developer's story. I'm sure Jeff has many things he would like to say about that. <laughs> Even though it's settled and it's no longer a thing anymore. But if you were to play this collection, you would never know that any of that was a thing. You'd only know that if you are an enthusiast like me who spends way too much time on the internet and who learned about this as it happened. And that's just, I feel that does a little bit of a disservice. Does it make this collection not worth it? No, 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 not at all. This collection's great. Jeff Minter deserves more attention and praise for what he's done. I think this collection is a great way to do that. Uh, and I think like all these collections, all three of these collections to date, the Digital Eclipse is done. I think people who are interested in the history of games and some of the best games and designers that have ever been should get, <coughs> excuse me, should get and experience all three of them. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff to learn, a lot of cool stuff to play, and a lot of great history uh, to experience but it's not complete. And that's what bugs me about it. Cause that's kind of the point of a documentary. If it's a documentary that's not a, you know, uh, that's not attempting to editorialize, it should, it should talk about everything, the good and the bad. And there is some bad that it talks about in here. It talks about the, the, the hard times that Jeff Minter had earlier, early in his career. And I'm just gonna interrupt here. This is the one original game um, that Digital Eclipse made for this collection. They always do this uh, in each of these. This is a remake of Grid Runner in 2023, and it's a really sick presentation, actually. It's based on the 1982 game, and I think runs that code underneath, but this is way cool. So I just wanted to point that out. I love the visuals of this, it's super neat. Um, but yeah, I, I it, 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 it irks me that we don't get a complete history lesson in a lot of these cases. I don't really have any complaints about Jordan Mechner's. I, I don't know every, I probably don't, I probably do know more about Jeff Minter as a, as a, as a designer and a personality than I do Jordan Mechner. So maybe there are things missing from his that I, I didn't see, but nothing came to mind. Um, but yeah, like Atari 50, there there is history here that is is going untold, and I I just feel that does a bit of a disservice um, to the uh, the end user of the product who is coming here to not just play some cool stuff, but to learn uh, cool things about about a, a great historical figure in gaming. So I don't know. I, I hope that's something that they're willing to address at some point, but. Um, that's my only real gripe. Other than that, this is an absolutely fantastic collection. It's funny because I always look forward to talking about these, but they're always hard to talk about because I could just sit here and go through the whole collection with you. And honestly, I'd love to, but that's not fair because they, <laughs> you know, guys need to make money y'all. And, uh, I, I don't want to just sit here and spoil everything that's cool about this collection. People should go and buy this for themselves, not just to play the games, but to actually, um, get to experience the, to, to learn the history, because that's really why you should be here. If you're not into the history, well, then you should just go buy Jeff Minter's games on their own. And, and, you know, if you just want to play the stuff, but he really is he, he's this he's he's a sort of underground sensation i guess you'd say and i always thought he never got the recognition that he deserved for his contributions even though he may have a lot more shall we say derivative works than some other uh historical developers his contributions are nonetheless important and valuable and everything he makes has a style all its own when you see a minter joint you know <laughs> um, you know, but there's important things I think that should be talked about. You know, another thing that they missed that I just remembered as well is Unity. And I'm not talking about the game engine that's run itself into the ground. Uh, I'm talking about there was a project at one point that the now departed Lionhead Studios was supposed to do with Jeff Mentor. It was going to be a game slash visualizer exclusively for the GameCube. And there was actually a prototype of it done, but 
Lion Head ended up consolidating at one point and the game never came out. And there is no mention of that in here at all. Um, now, pre-release, somebody asked in the Steam forums, is Unity go is the Unity prototype going to be in this? And the developer said no, because we don't have access to it and we don't have the rights to it, so we can't put the game in here. And I was like, okay, you can't put the game in. I understand that. That would actually have been really impressive, but also a pretty big ask <laughs> to put an unreleased GameCube prototype in here, you know? But um, there's no mention of it. It's, it's like it doesn't exist. And again, that's omitted history, important omitted history. And that bugs me because it, 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 you're just, you're not doing the historical record properly that way. And I know I'm harping on this. I know I've already talked for several minutes on that point, but it's important because if you don't, like, I know there are people in my community who are looking forward to playing this collection and who want to see it and who wouldn't know this because they weren't around for a, a, a lot of Jeff Minter's um, stuff, even his more recent stuff. And a lot of what they're going to learn about him comes from, will come from this collection. And this collection doesn't have everything in it. And I don't think that serves the historical record well. So, I would love to hear from Digital Eclipse, and I probably won't, but I would love to hear from them what their reasoning is for that. Both with like the exclusion of the Atari Lynx and Atari 50, the Atari Lynx full history, and indeed in this case, why Jeff, Jeff uh, critical parts of Jeff's history, including some of the not so pleasant stuff, um, is just treated as if it doesn't exist here. I mean, to be fair, maybe Jeff didn't want to talk about it. Maybe Jeff went, you know, those were bad parts of my career that are now over and I've moved on and there's no more hatchets to bury. And you know what? Fair enough. I think if the subject of the documentary says, I, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, fair enough. I think that's something worth respecting. But if not, and it was something that was just ignored. I don't know. I don't like that. But I don't want my overly long rant on that uh, to be treated as, yeah, this is Mama Llama, which as you can see, uh, there's actually a complexity meter <laughs> for each of the games in this pack to tell you how hard they're gonna be to learn. This one is five burning llamas. This is borderline impenetrable. There is an instruction book and it's actually not that big, but oh, this one's weird, boy. I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, there's a button called Retrogenesis. Like, and yeah, like. I, yeah. <laughs> this one's just completely like, I don't know. Um, but if you spend the time to learn it, it's probably deep as heck. So, hey, that's always cool. Um, because they're so hairy, you know. I mean, obviously. Um. And I already, I already died. Yeah, well, you know. Um, yeah, but it's a great collection. The tech that they have powering this is actually really impressive, uh, and they do a great job with it. It, it, it's a great way to re, to, to, to experience possibly for the first time or to re-experience indeed uh, some of the, the most weird and delightful um, arcade focus games. Uh, from the British gaming scene. Uh, you know, a lot of this, especially as older stuff, you can't really buy anymore. And good luck finding this stuff at all in the collector scene. And if you do, good luck doing so for any reasonable amount of money. Um, so this gives people a great way to experience this stuff. And and I think you should. If, you, if it looks too weird for you, if you're just like, man, you're crazy, I can't handle, I can't handle this stuff. I get it. It's not for everyone. And I think Jeff would probably be the first person to tell you that he doesn't make games for everyone. And you know, he wants, uh, he wants people who can appreciate the weird. Um, and not everyone can, and that's okay. Um, personally, I love the weird and I love his weird. Um, I'd love the chance to meet him someday. I'm sure I never will. He goes to a lot of British gaming conventions, which, you know, I, I live across the pond, so that's a little hard for me to do, but I'd love a chance to meet Jeff one day because he's just, 
he's very very cool and like i said he doesn't get enough credit so all i can say is go into this knowing that there are a couple of omissions and if you're not if you want to know about unity for the gamecube and about what happened with txk and his stuff with atari it is documented it is out there you shouldn't have to go look it up it should be in this collection for you to easily see but it's not but if you're really really interested you can go out to find it and i understand that i may be holding these collections to a standard that's just too unreasonably high you know i, I i'm someone for whom every ounce of history i consider extremely important and both fascinating and i may be maybe i'm just putting too much weight on these collections in terms of the amount of responsibility that i think they should have uh to tell everything but that's how i feel um i'm curious to know what you guys think about that let me know in the comments you know do you think that stuff's important or do you think it's kind of like well if it's out there and this is really more of a celebration of the cool stuff he did rather than the bad things he experienced you know maybe that should be left out are my standards too high i'm willing to hear that maybe maybe some people think think they are maybe jeff would even think that i don't know um but it is a great collection with a ton of great games in it and a lot of really cool history to learn and so far yeah with a couple of little omissions digital eclipse has been batting a thousand with these collections i highly recommend all of them um atari 50 the jordan mechner prince of persia collection and this collection um i think you should just get them all i really hope these do well enough the digital eclipse can continue uh putting them out and i have very i'm very curious to see what they do next <laughs> uh or who do, who what developer they showcase next uh and i'll be there to talk about that one too so yeah this was kind of an odd ramble i know i went all over the place with this one but uh like i said if you really want to know about this stuff go get this package don't don't have me spoil it for you um but i think it's really cool and i really like what's in here and i'm um i always enjoy uh i always enjoy these packs and i think people should check them out because gaming history is important if we don't know where games came from we we ultimately don't aren't going to know where they where they go or where they should go so i think it's important uh, that everybody um who, who's really into this medium get to learn a bit more of its history like this so yeah that is llama soft the jeff minter collection um it's out now uh go check it out it's everywhere and seriously i believe jeff minter's twitter is llamasoft underscore ox follow him because what you're gonna learn is what you're gonna get from that account in the cesspool that is twitter is you're gonna get um some cool insights into the mind of a game dev and a whole lot of cool videos about sheep <laughs> and i think we could all use more of that in our life so thank you guys for watching i do appreciate it if you like what you saw here please do all the normal youtube things that does help out a great deal leave a comment down below not just to tell me what you think about you know what what i said about or what i think of the how the history is represented here but like what do you think of this do you know do you have memories of jeff minter let you know and, and about playing his games leave them down below i always want to hear people's stories about that and what else would you like to see or who else would you like to see digital eclipse do gold master series titles on because i i i will send those to them i have a pr contact who i think would be very interested to know that stuff so let me know um in the comments what else you'd like to see them do and uh i'll make sure that that gets that gets passed on to them and you can also follow me over at twitch.tv slash px abstraction streams will be coming back soon i hope i've just been so busy that it's it's been it's been difficult the last while but we're gonna do um retro stuff over there for a while once i bring things back tackling what i call my deep backlog which i'm really looking forward to and we have a great little com community there that i would love to see you be a part of thanks again everybody and i'll see you on the next ramble you folks have yourselves a good one take her easy